nothing left to lose now. Everything to prove now. As long as I'm alive, I'ma fight back. My fire never cools down. And I'm about to catch fire. Welcome to the Michelob Ultra Pure Gold Post Show, where we are going to wrap up today's action, day three of the Holly Eva Challenger. Here, the final stop of the Challenger series. We're on the North Shore of Oahu, and I'm Kaipo Guerrero, joined by North Shore born and bred stalwart, Ross Williams, as well as one of the most entertaining people in the entire surfing world, Strider Wazalewski. Why, thank you, Kaipa. Waz, man. How are you guys doing? I'm doing, I'm doing great. Thoughts on today? We had an action packed. It was a half a day, but it was a half a day of action. I'm calling entertainment at its best. I mean, if you had to get thrown out there in the water, you would have been uh, just scratching for your life. There was so much water moving around, and a lot of guys stepped up to the plate, though. Big, heavy carves going down on those open faces out there. A lot of water in the nose, though. <laughs> <laughs> Ross, I mean, I want to hear your reaction to this because... Giant Haliva, you're no stranger to Giant Haliva. <laughs> it's fun out there. Um, you know, if you're if you're thinking about free surfing, you're like, this is going to be enjoyable. I'm going to go out there and catch a couple of big bombs with my boys. Uh, but you wrap that up into a 30-minute heat. You talk about qualifying, and it makes it a whole different skitsy uh, ball game. You know, that was challenging for the guys, but this is the best surfers in the world, uh, and we want to see that. We we see this type of energy and this type of uh, you know you need to. You need to produce this kind of surfing on the main tour. So throw them out there. I like the call today. It was cool. Yeah. Speaking of qualifiers, a man that's qualified for the 2020 championship tour and just won his last heat is Connor O'Leary. Connor is against the glass with Shannon. Thanks so much, Kaipo. Connor, you've had a few days to process that requalification. How are you feeling now heading into the rest of Haliva, knowing you've already got that clinch? Yeah, it's a huge relief. Like I was saying to you before, it's, it's the first time I've kind of qualified you know, and known I've qualified so early in an event. So um, to have, you know, to relieve that, that pressure and that angst and, and all that, especially during this last few lay days, um, already knowing that I've qualified, is, it's a massive relief. You know, it's been a crazy year for me, you know, a lot, of, a lot of downs. And then it was, you know, I was stoked that I could kind of reset and change my perspective on a lot of things. And, yeah, stoked to, to come into this heat with no pressure and just wanted to kind of just catch a lot of waves and try and, you know, make, get a rhythm while, while catching a lot of waves. So it worked. Well, it certainly looked that way. Talk to me about timing out there. Timing at Haliva is difficult on the worst, I mean, the best of days, let alone the worst of days like this, where it's just really challenging overall. You walked away with that 7.4. Talk me through it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm working with, with Marco in this event, so it's, it's really good to have him to kind of bounce off. And we just kind of came to a point of the rip's so strong and, um, you know, you can get stuck out there so easily. So just trying to keep that repetition up at the start and trying to maintain a rhythm while catching a lot of waves because then you're kind of out of it out of the sets, you're not going to get caught inside and get washed in. So I just kind of hung wide and just picked my time. And it's easier to paddle from wide to deep instead of deep chasing it wide. So yeah, once I was on the waves, it was just kind of picking where I needed to place a turn. It's nothing, uh, nothing crazy, but yeah, just, just simple stuff. And yeah, it worked, worked well. Well, it worked out really well. Congratulations, congratulations on that requalification. And we'll see you into the quarterfinals. Yes, we'll nice. go back to you guys. Take it away for the post show. Thank you, Shannon. Congratulations again to Connor O'Leary. Ross, that was uh, Haliva 101. It's yeah. easier to paddle from wide to deep than from deep to wide. And, and these are things that, that all the coaches will repeat and repeat and repeat. But the bottom line is, is you kind of have to because on a day like today, the current's going 100 miles an hour. And it's so easy to get caught looking at the shore. And next thing you know, you're on the peak and you're going to be there for 10 minutes. So uh, easier said than done. Strider? Let's take a look at the heat right here. Uh, that Connor O'Leary advanced out of, because this strider is when Haliva really started maxing out. <laughs> it was, but you know, like, like he said, he got the ball rolling and, and a rhythm in the waves is what he wanted, wave after wave, kind of getting a repetition rhythm. And that's what he did and, and it worked out for him. But the surfing he did on the faces out there, super strong. The board actually looks quite small, Ross, and you know, for, 
a, a, a big guy in big ways. You'd think maybe he'd have a little bit more board, but he's loving that little board. Yeah, he's a bit of a unit. Um, the board looked like it had some length, but it was looked to me just under his arm, thin and narrow. Um, and you can see it right there, just slicing through a water. It looked very refined, Kaipo, like sort of an old school board, and he put it on rail nicely. And Kanoa Igarashi was also able to perform well out there, Ross. We had a good time talking about Kanoa during that heat. You know, we were just talking about how headstrong he is. He's very smart. Reminds me of Gabriel Medina that he knows when to flash it up for the judges, when to sort of sell it, and, and when to turn it up the volume as well. So a pretty smooth advancement for Kanoa. So th both of them advancing on into quarterfinals as we're looking to finals day. Strider, uh, we had a number of standouts today. Uh, what does it stand out for you? Uh, to, to be honest, uh, watching these guys attack the waves, I mean, I guess Zeke would be the guy for me. I mean, he was really strong out there. I mean, he, he, he had a focus coming into it, and, and that's something that we really wanted to see was focused Zeke Lau, and we got to see that today. Yeah, Ezekiel Lau, uh, this was his heat right here. This is actually Colin Robson who advanced out of this heat and really kept his dreams alive Ross of uh, that championship Torber. Yeah, I like the way he surfs. You know, he's a he's a heavy footed surfer and at Haliva, that's kind of the name of the game. Uh, it really pays to be powerful out here. And, and I was pleasantly surprised to watch Colum, you know, kind of kill a couple sections. Speaking of power, Strider, Zeke threw down the hammer. Yeah, those those beautiful turns in the hook right there. You know, he, he went out there on a little more lumber. He said he paddled out on a 6-2 in the morning and then realized he needed something else, got on a 6-4, and he said it felt really sturdy under his feet. And, and his turns just felt really solid. So it was nice to see him on a little bit more board, pushing a little bit harder. And as you can see, it paid off for him. Yeah, it sure did. This is the kind of power surfing that pays dividends at Haleiwa. He, Zeke's already a proven winner at Sunset's Ross. He wants a victory here at Haleiwa. You know what, here's a kind of a funny analogy. And speaking of, you know, Zeke being a Hawaiian surfer, he kind of reminds me, the way he surfs and competes reminds me of Max Holloway. Mm. A lot of repetition, he's strong, he's scrappy. Um, and, and that's kind of how he serves Haleiwa. You know, he throws down these cool gouges and snaps, but he, he, he's smart and he knows when to jab and jab and jab and, and kind of survive Haleiwa, and he did that today really well. And like Max, he's got that posture when he comes out of it. He's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I a little like bit that. of swag. Yeah, a little bit of it. swag, a lot of confidence, <laughs> and that goes a long way. You know, when we look at today's uh, happenings, a lot, of, a lot of guys were right on the cut line or right below the cut line having to advance out of this round of 32. One of those guys was Sammy Pupo. He, it was a do-or-die heat here. A lot of pressure for Miguel Pupo's younger brother because Sammy wants to join his brother on tour. This was Kalani Ball who started off that heat utilizing a little bit longer board, and it really paid off for Kalani Strider. Yeah, he just, you know, he's on a heater. He's having a great event so far, and it's fun to watch him, like, throw down some power surfing. Uh, you know, I get, we've, we saw it a little earlier in the event, and he, and he did really well. And then you got Sammy right here, Ross. Yeah, Samuel Pupo, uh, the blood runs deep there. A surfing family, you got a, uh, Pops is an awesome shaper. And, you know, and Miguel Pupo has been putting on highlights for a good 10, 12 years now. So now they got some fresh blood in the family on tour. And, and I like the way Sammy surfs. He's known for doing huge errors and small waves, but he looked pretty good at Hollywood today. He sure did. And he performed in a clutch situation uh, to advance out of this heat. Sammy Pupo, uh, he did leap over Jordy Lawler in the rankings. Jordy was right ahead of him and Sammy able to do that. But Kalani Ball, Solid, rode a 6-4 out there, made it through the heat along with Sammy Pupo with that clutch performance strider. Uh, Sammy is going to have to keep his head really stable on his shoulders and keep that noise quiet between his ears because his job's not done yet. No, I, I, that's the great thing about these Challenger Series is the guys can come up from down below and, you know, making it into the final, you get these big leaps over everybody else within the event and the ranking. So I feel like if he, if he does, you know, just stay the course and surf the way he's been, which is pretty solid but uh, kind of safe, he's, he's looking good. Well, guys, we're going to take a quick break, uh, but when we come back, we're going to look at some of the top five moments of today.
Well, I can't believe that there's going to be a CS event in Narrabeen in these upcoming years. It's been so amazing this being my first year on the Challenger Series to travel the world and see all these beautiful places and to have an event that's going to be right around the corner where I'll get to sleep in my own bed and surf my home break. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, I'm so stoked to find out that there's a Challenger Series at Narrabeen. Growing up there my whole life, it's going to be pretty special having great support behind me and all my family and friends. I've been traveling the world for almost 10 years and I'm so, so pumped for an event to finally be back in Narrabeen. Grown up there, I spent a lot of time there and it definitely stacks up against all of the waves on the QS. I think it's going to be a beautiful spot for a show and bring on an event at Narrabeen, can't wait. I think after the success of the WCT event we had here earlier in the year, I think it's a coup for Narrabeen. You know, I think the waves here are good, they're regarded as one of the best breaks in Sydney. Um, if not New South Wales, it's good for all the community. So yeah, we're stoked to have the event back in Narrabeen. Northern Beaches is the home of surfing in Australia, where you know we talk about the Duke of Hanamuku way back in 1914. Support of the local board riders, which has been fantastic, and um, we couldn't do it without them. And it's just been a, an amazing and easy um, transition to say, keep it here, but move it to North Narrabeen and give it a new home. The championship tour put Narrabeen back on the global map. Narrabeen has always been a spiritual home uh, for surfers right around the world. It's renowned as probably the best beach break in Australia. Uh, and so it is only fitting that uh, we have these sorts of events to recognise the importance of Narrabeen for the surfing community. It's the Michelob Ultra Pure Gold Post Show here at Holly Eva. And uh, that's some great news that Narrabeen's going to be back on the schedule on the Challenger Series. And um, that's just, uh, I think, a break that has 40 years of professional competition history. Uh, that's great news. Kuiper Girl, Ross Williams, Strider Wazalewski. Ross, your thoughts? You've competed a lot of, in, back in the day in Narrabeen. Yeah, I mean, back in the 90s, we had a World Championship Tour event there, and you know, the Coke Classic, um, the, the Pro Junior was there for many, many years. Um, and uh, North Nara is, you know, it's obviously has a long history of awesome surfers that are from there. They're a hardcore bunch of dudes and uh, very competitive. So it makes sense that it's going to be this, like, reoccurring full-time uh, venue for a CS event. It's just, uh, like you said, the local support there and, and the Board Riders Club and everybody that's involved, the, the history that goes back, they're pushing so hard. Mm. They feel like they have all this energy and that you just, in the images they even showed on that update, you could just feel it through the images of the, how much like core surf there is in that community. Yeah, look forward to it. Uh, Gabe Medina, Caroline Marks, really it showed great surfing there in 2021. It'll be back. You can check the full schedule at worldsurfleague.com. But guys... It's time for the top five. And number five, the young man from Encinitas, California. I got to give it up in this top five to none other than Jake Marshall Ross. Yeah, what do they call it? A uh, lot troll uh, over there from, uh, <laughs> from San Diego. And so, you know, Jake Marshall, young American from San Diego. And it's cool to see that he's going to be on tour. And he had a big day, too. You know, he's known for ripping through shore breaks, but I was impressed. You know, he made the lineup look pretty easy today. Yeah, great surfing. Uh, and, and to be as strong as he was on that inside section, you know, Jake is, is pretty much putting a stamp on his entrance into the World Tour. Yeah, this was an eight-point ride for Jake Marshall, and he nice. sailed into the quarterfinals via that big number from Jake Marshall. Number four, the powerhouse out of Kappa Lama Heights, Ezekiel Lau Strider. Whoosh, big carving turns, finishing with the little whip in the tail. That set up turn for perfect timing in the lip to get out in front of that white water so he doesn't fall off. I mean, it's just everything was going his way out there, Ross. And I feel like, you know, when you, when you get in a nice rhythm, it would be great. I would love to see Zeke Lau win this contest. Hey, it's very possible. Zeke puts in uh, probably more hours at Haliba than anyone in the field, even more than John. So, you know, he loves this wave. Kaipo, he has a lot of respect for Haliba and it shows. Hey, possible uh, event champ. Here's a past event champ, Ross, that threw down some hammers. Got some big numbers just for a couple of big turns out there. John John Florence is number three. Yeah, John, you can tell he didn't hook up with the perfect wave in his heat. But again, as John does, he outperformed on him. Uh, he had that one 
one maneuver. He had a 6.9, I believe it was, or a 7.3 for a big layback hammer. Hopefully they have that on the highlight reel. But yeah, he's looking pretty in form. I think this is the one you were talking about, Ross. Just a big roll in and it comes off the bottom and what's ah, oh. drops the wallet, <laughs> just you. comes out of that lip. I mean, he was going so fast and Shion was on the beach watching that and losing his mind. <laughs> if you don't recall, it was the best thing ever. Full surf stoke coming out for John. Speaking Dunn of Shion, Wallace. number two, Shion Crawford, the 16-year-old. Holly was his home break strider, and Shion is do is on his way to a Cinderella story here at Ali'i. Terjan Hackinson just in the lip. You I mean he's like dropping below level. You can't even see him, and he comes up to rise into the lip. So great surfing. Finding those open faces out there, Ross, which is the key here at Haleiwa, and finding enough. Look at him all the way down the end section. It is so shallow right there, and you know he looks super comfortable. Yeah, Xi'an has a very recognizable style, and, and for all your audience at home, if you're not familiar, which I don't blame you, he's a young Grom uh, with Xi'an Crawford. Get used to it. He's a real steady competitor. He never falls. He has a knack for catching the best waves at Haleiwa, and Kaipo, I'm sure you've surfed at Haleiwa with Xi'an. The dude's on every single wave. You just let Energizer Bunny. So uh, <laughs> that's a good recipe for competing very well. So look out for Xion. He could have a huge future on tour. I uh, love it. Xion Crawford into the quarterfinals. Number one, we got a new name on the championship tour, and that name is Liam O'Brien, Ross. Well, first of all, that shot on a beach looks like he's straight out of the 80s there with that hairdo. Pretty awesome mop there from Liam, but MR. We're we were talking about uh, Liam and how he's so humble. He's very easy to back. He's just a, a mellow cat. But Strider, the way he performs on a wave, his style is beautiful. Um, and he's got a knack for picking the, the right section at the right time at Haleiwa. Yeah, you know, from the hair and the surfing and the whole thing, I just get Mark Richards back out of him. I mean, I just love the way he's got a great flow. And I was talking to Reynos on the beach, and he was super excited to watch and coach and go through the motions with Liam O'Brien. Yeah, shouts out to Reynos Hayes, who's in the support corner for Liam O'Brien. Big news as he hit the beach, and we made it official today, so we got four spots taken by uh, the Challenger Series surfers, all locked up for 2022, and that's what the Challenger Series, Ross, is all about. Absolutely, uh, and again, the pressure today was pretty gnarly. It was doubled up because you're you know, trying to handle 10-foot Haleiwa, which is, is tough just to free surf. But you think about all the surfers that are solely, but surely, surely we're mentioning these names that are graduating to the World Tour. To do it at Big Haleiwa, it's, uh, I mean, what a better platform. I mean, I almost feel like uh, it was in a benefit that it was so big because maybe that's all you had to focus on was yeah. the waves. Because it was kind of so scary and so much water moving and you could just have to, you're so in the moment trying to get away from everything and stay in the channel that maybe all that other stuff was falling away. Yep. Well, there you go. Well, thank you, Ross. Thank you, Strider. Remember, check in worldsurfleague.com, 7.30 Hawaii time to see if we're going to be on tomorrow. Aloha and enjoy today's end of the day highlights. Aloha. Welcome to Haleiwa Town. This is a classic event with a lot on the line. The final stop of the Challenger Series. Jake, congratulations on qualifying. I'm over the moon. This summer, I was trying to sell tequila and tacos. We have Connor Coffin looking for a barrel. And pulls in. Colin Robson. Zeke Lau, Hinak Pao Lau. Beautiful big gouge. John John Florence. Oh, well, champ. Deep off the <laughs> bottom, the layback hook. Oh, oh, wow, that thing was so crazy. I was tripping out. Gian Crawford drills that first section. Griffin Colapinto. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.